Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 298 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Thursday, January 18th. And if I am voguing, kids, you know why it is. Because today is Madonna Beaver Day. <laughs> I am so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. You've seen uh, her before, haven't you? Once. Oh, only okay. once. I've never seen her live. I've seen live concert footage, but I've never seen her live in person. But yep. um from what I've seen of this uh, this tour so far, she's pulling out all the stops. And uh, I did notice the other day somebody posted a video of her and said, oh, look at her going. Yes, she needs a needs a railing to hold on to because she's in her 60s now. And then somebody else posted the original video where they back it out and go, yeah, maybe because she's suspended 50 feet above the audience on a trestle that's moving around. Yeah, mm-hmm. she needs a bar to hold on to because she's dancing on a platform 60 feet above people's heads. Mm-hmm. She, she does, does yoga. have a safety harness, but she's holding on to the rail too. I mean, yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, yeah. This one's, uh, I think it's uh, called the Celebration Tour, and she's basically like the whole career retrospective. So it's just going to be a party. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right. It's not like she, she doesn't have an album out that she's promoting or anything. It's just you know, thank you, fans. Well, it's kind of like Forever. like the Rolling Stones still tour, right? Right. Uh, but they're. They, they actually just put out a new record, but they've been touring for years. They hadn't put out a record in like a decade. Yeah. They kept touring. Why? Well, they have the catalog. So just do it, man. Oh, yeah. It's the Rolling Freaking Stones. People want to see them, right? It's They're Madonna. one of the best she's spring a, bands in the world. In history, ever. yeah. yeah. I, and, and it's Madonna. I mean, my goodness. She's Madonna. <laughs> right. You know what I was so. watching last night? Because this is in, falls in line with this. I was watching Almost Famous. Ah, uh, yes. From 2000s. The movie's 24 years old, and there's a scene where Jimmy Fallon's character says, if you think Mick Jagger's going to be up there when he's 50, you are sadly, sadly mistaken. I'm like, you're right. He's up there at 80. I'm just doing it. Doing it. Yeah. So, oh, I am such a happy, 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 happy beaver. Yeah, the first time I saw her, it took forever for me to get to see her. Well, first of all, you know, most of her career, she's been so big that if she ever came to Canada, it was Toronto and Montreal. And that was it, yeah. And probably not even Vancouver. Um, I think she's played Ottawa once. I could be wrong, though. I think now, yes, like later on. Uh, yes, uh, I think it was a uh, yeah, sessions tour. Yeah, she did. She played. She played at the CTC, and as a matter of fact, her uh, the head of Live Nation Live Touring, Art Fogel, who is from Ottawa. There's a film called "Who the F is Art Fogel," 
if, if you watch this documentary, he's made careers. Lady Gaga actually called up the director of the film after it was in the can and ready to be debuted and said, oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. You've got to film me. Just come to my show next week. After the show, I'll come backstage. We'll do a thing. So she did a thing before she went on stage, did a thing after she went on stage and uh, recorded about an hour's worth of footage. And the guy just edited it down to the best stuff. She's like, use whatever you want. She goes, I owe my whole career to Art Fogel. She goes, I'm nothing without him. And if you watch the film, you'll understand why artists love this guy. He was a drummer. He was a musician. So he understands the artistry of it. So yeah, he's the, the guy, the head of global touring. When, when the largest concert tour in history prior to Taylor Swift, uh, U2's 360 tour, you know, with the big claw stage. Mm, yes. That was him. And then Bono had that bicycle accident in New York City where he was really severely injured. He almost died. So they had to cancel the tour, postpone the tour for like a year and a half or something. And Art was like, yeah, no worries. <laughs> Just chill as can be. Anyway, yeah. sorry, I went way off topic there. No, but I mean, she had to cancel too, right? She had that huge yeah. viral infection. So That's this right. is a concept that we were supposed to see in August. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Right. So uh, we're going to see now. So I am so excited. It's going to be a girl's night. <laughs> my friends, Erin, my friend, Andrea, we're going, we're taking a train. It's going to just, you know, gab and chat on the way there, have, you know, some lunch, have a nice supper, go and party, rock out. Is there a live uh, an open app? Like gabbing? It's just Madonna, I think. Huh? I, I would assume there's not on this one. If you're doing a whole career retrospective, and yeah, it's like a three-hour like show around since the '80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would assume. I would, I would assume not. So yeah, I am super excited about this, and um, I did manage to get some sleep. <laughs> like that kid in the Disney commercial, way like, too excited to sleep. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So we kind of got off track with the intro. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misty Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a nibble for you today. It's going to be a short one because Mr. Grizzly does have a hard out today. Um, interesting choice of chapeau. I like I it. It's almost like a, a little bit of banum. Uh, kind of, uh, if I grow my beard back, I can be the, uh, zigzag guy. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hey. uh, it's, it's a little, it's a little chilly this morning and, uh, yeah, I thought I'd put on some, normally I wear wool, but this morning I'm wearing fleece cause I'm doing some laundry. Uh, and you can see that this has a, a pocket, but the zipper came off ah. in the wash. Oh no. Yeah, because it was glued on, and I tried to reattach it, and it wouldn't stay. And I thought, you know, I could just go over to to the company that makes this, which you can sort of see. I'm not going to say yes. Anything. I can go right over to the Rito Center and say, hey, um, and they usually go, yeah, here's a new one. Oh, I'm really okay. good about that. Wow, pretty good. Because I mean, this this isn't. It still looks like new. It's just that came apart. So mm -hmm. I, I'll, I might do that on the way home from work today. All right. And before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly. How's your mental health today? Pretty good, actually. Um, went to bed, uh, went to bed early and slept right through until 3 a.m. when I had to get up to see a man about a horse and then went right back to sleep. And when the alarm went off at five, I hit it. I, I know I, I remember hitting it. And then next thing I knew, it was six. It was like I, I hit, I hit stop. And I closed my eyes and then all of a sudden it was six. So it was like I slept an hour and it felt like two seconds. So mm. I think I slept really well last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a kid Hugo and bonjour les voyageurs. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> it looks like you, you, you need your, your, your chasse galerie, the, the canoe. Uh, that, uh, I don't know if anybody you know that, uh, that legend. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. So yes. And for me, um, I'm going to show you. It's, not quite a t-shirt from a t-shirt from my days when I used to swim. Oh. There's um, every year, well, every four years, there's a competition called the Gay Games, which people used to call like the Gay Olympics until mm -hmm. the IOC got a little upset and said you can't say that anymore. So it's a big multi-sporting event. But for swimming in particular, there's a Gay and Lesbian World Championships as well every year called IGLA, I G L A, and this was, I believe. 19, 1996. Well, that's that's an old T-shirt. When I competed, it's an old T-shirt. 
I'm really not rough on my stuff because <laughs> it looks I have, really I have a t-shirt in my cupboard somewhere from the mid eighties. And here's the, here, here's where the, the re, here's the reason I kept it. I liked it. It just said new balance and it had some, like a splash of color on it. And that was one of the reasons I kept it. The other reason was I bought it back then and it was, a, I bought a large. Okay. By today's standards, it would be called a small. <laughs> Mm. I have to buy small and extra small. Um, I didn't shrink. I'm bigger now than I was in 1985. Okay. Mm -hmm. They just changed the sizes of the, the, the labels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is people a, feel, but they call it vanity sizing. They call yes, it, I believe. Yes. This is uh, from a competition in Washington, DC, which reminds me when you, you told me about that story, there was another time a few years later, I was in Washington, DC and it was in January from MLK day mm -hmm. which recently just passed in the united right. states and uh, for some reason i well for some reason i went like a canadian i brought my whole way my winter stuff but it was like 15 degrees celsius there mm -hmm. and all i had was like really heavy winter stuff so i'm thinking like I'm i need die. some shorts yeah well i'm not a very big guy i literally went to every store I could find and I couldn't find a pair of just black shorts in my size until I went into the kids section. And then my struggle was to try to find a pair of shorts that didn't have something like SpongeBob on them because I was shopping in the kids section. Yeah. Cause it was the only thing that would fit you, right? The only thing that would fit me. Yeah, I know. It I know. took me about like five hours to find a pair of shorts in four stores. <laughs> my friend, uh, my friend Vanessa, who was on the podcast for, uh, for a couple of minutes back in uh, December when we were at the pump, there, yes. the last one. She lives in in Switzerland, and she lived in Geneva for many years. Now she lives in Zug, which is not far from Zurich. And uh, I've gone to visit her many times, and we'd be out shopping, and and she'd go in and go to buy something. She'd come out and she goes, "Paul, this has gotten ridiculous." I go, "What?" Now she's tiny. She's five foot tall. She's she's like she's like Bridget, very very tiny. It's not a slight, okay? It's just an observation. And she has to buy size zero. She's like, this is ridiculous. Zero? It, does that mean I don't exist? How, like, what? what's next? Size negative two? Like, come on. <laughs> it's just, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Size is zero? What, what is that? Uh, to, to me, you say size zero, and that means like does not exist. It, precisely, precisely. But it literally says size zero. You, you stand up sideways and you vanish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's absurd. <laughs> yeah. like, why would you have a size zero? Doesn't ask me, man. But they do. <laughs> Very counterintuitive. Okay, I'm, we I'm went not in the way off industry. the tracks. <laughs> we went way off tracks. Uh, kids. Um, let's see, let's see. What do we want? Do you have anything to start us off with, Mr. Wilson? I, I, I had something here, and I'm trying to find what I, where it went. It, it disappeared from my timeline. I, let me see. I think I bookmarked it. If I can just find it here. Where is it? It's, things just are disappearing all day. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Uh, we, we didn't get a chance to discuss this the other day, uh, but it, it's, it's something that I think, well, you know, here's the thing. This is... Um, this was this took place in Germany the other day, in uh, Le Leipzig, mm -hmm. in Eastern Germany. Thousands joined a rally against the far right AFD, chanting "All together against fascism." I'm going to show you a little bit of this footage. Mm. So it's funny how you know suddenly uh, you know we can we can. <laughs> um, now that Germany is actually denouncing the the AFD party. Mm -hmm. Uh, meanwhile, here in Canada, certain members of Parliament of the Conservative Party of Canada are embracing the AFD party and Christine Anderson, the fascist that has been called so in Germany. Alle zusammen gegen den Faschismus! Alle zusammen gegen den Faschismus! Alle zusammen!
Wow. Yeah, it's uh, over 30,000 people uh, chanting against the far-right AFD, all together against fascism. Good. Yeah. Good. And that'd be the beginning of a trend. We need more of that. Oh, and, and some of the comments on this don't even don't even bother. <laughs> I'm not reading any of them. They're just <laughs> absurd. I, I will read this one to you. Because this is okay. funny. AFD is not far right. It's just right. Unless you believe Trump is far right as well. He is. <laughs> By every measurable metric. Every yeah. single possible measurable metric. Trump is far right. <laughs> there was doubt about this? Well, it is a cult after all. Remember oh, that. Yes. yes, that's true. It is a cult. Yes. The people there. Yes. Yeah. You, you're, yeah. I guess when you're a member of a cult, you're not supposed to notice that you're a member of a cult That's while right. you're in the cult. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know. Otherwise, you, you probably wouldn't join. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you saw the, the headline that I posted for this morning's show. There's a new, a new series on Marvel. I watched it. Um, it's only five episodes, so it's not super long. I watched it with uh, Bridget, and I said, you're going to. I had watched it. I had watched the series. Um, one evening when I couldn't sleep. And then I told Bridget about it. And I said, you're really going to like this. She goes, why? I'm not really into the, not really big into this Marvel stuff. And I go, no, you'll love this one. She goes, why? I said, well, it's, uh, the character starts out as a villain and becomes a good, you know, has like a, a changeover eventually. I said, the character is um, deaf, not hearing impaired, deaf, can't hear a thing. Um, amputee and indigenous. She goes, what? I go, yeah. I go, oh, this character's been around since 1999. And um, yeah, we'll just watch this. So here's the, here's the interesting part. If you've not seen this, it's really good. And people go, oh, it's just Marvel's being woke. Marvel's been woke since day one. Yeah. <laughs> day freaking one. Stan Lee was woke before woke was a, a, a part of the common vernacular. I mean, comic books in general were. I mean, if you saw the X Men movie where they suddenly discover a cure for the mutism, it's like, hello, you think any gay person watched that movie and didn't think about themselves? Precisely. Precisely. Because, and I'm not into the whole Marvel comic, Justice League, DC comic yeah. whole thing at all. Sci fi, that's not my thing. I saw that movie and I was just like, is anybody watching the same movie I am? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm recognizing myself. Like, F you. Completely, completely. Marvel has been woke AF since day one. So you got all these fanboys losing their minds. Marvel's gone woke ever since Stan Lee died. I'm like, are you kidding? Stan Lee was the guy to triumph this. Stan Lee was the guy who, who created, as a white, a, a white Jewish man in New York City, boom. He was woke AF. Yeah. Always has been. Marvel always has been. It's like the people who go, Star Trek went woke with a new uh, non-binary character. It's like, have you ever seen Star Trek? Mm -hmm. Got, got Tabby G going Scooby Doo. Yes, yeah. that's I got, I got that one from both well, the fifth column. I hadn't noticed it before. I was like, do you notice that it's a group of young kids who are intelligent and smart, and almost every time the bad guy is some rich white guy? Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, yee, okay, trying to make money. Uh, and then, yeah, Kit Cassie goes, Graham Greene and Tantu Cardinal are in it. Yes, and Graham Greene is always excellent. Oh, as yeah. He always is. Always excellent. I mean, it, and I'm watching it with Bridget, and, I'm, and I start laughing at the scene I know is coming up. And she's like, what? And I go, just watch, just watch. And then, of course, she bursts out laughing. Graham Greene is, is uh, one of my favorite performers because he's a, um, a great, pardon me, a great dramatic actor. But when he does comedy, holy yeah. shit, is he funny. <laughs> by he the really is. Thing, by the damn thing, by the damn thing. You got to see it. <laughs> it's worth a watch, trust me. Oh, man. That's lovely. Oh, fantastic. Okay. <laughs> okay, James. Now this this is funny because oh. it's different universes because um, Wonder Woman is DC, right? <laughs> Not Marvel. <laughs> and and Wonder Woman, by the way, started out originally as an independent comic book by the guy who invented the lie detector. Oh yeah, yeah, really, for real, yeah. Um, 
yeah, William, I forget what his name was, but yeah, for real. Uh, there's a whole, there's a movie about him on, he had a, so his wife and his mistress, they had like a, um, a throuple back when it wasn't a thing. Okay. In the 40s. And he said, I'm coming up with a new character for a, a, a fictional character, a superhero. And she goes, I don't give a damn what you make this person, just make it a woman what their powers are. I just make it a woman. So he said, okay. And then he created Wonder Woman and then DC eventually picks it up. So yeah, you're, you're mixing genres there, James. Sorry. And I'm uh, a book geek. I haven't read a comic book since about 1982. I just have a pretty good memory for stuff. See, you could tell the kind of kid I was. Cause like my comic books, while everybody was reading all that kind of stuff, I was like an Archie and Richie, Rich and Casper. Oh, I like <laughs> Archie. Guy. I read Archie comic books. Come yeah. on. The Archie digest. Come on. Those were great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, they were great, but I, I didn't read the other stuff. Like all, all the sci-fi, weird other world type kind of stuff. Yeah. Was like, yeah, I'm just Superman, Spider-Man, I'm just like Batman, just passed like right all over them. <laughs> it just didn't, didn't interest me at all. I was a weird kid. <laughs> I really was a weird kid. Anyway. <laughs> all right. In the news since we are uh, going all over the place, but it is a very, very, very big day in the territory of Nunavut, kids and cubs. If we have, any, if we have anybody listening to us up there, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. But after nearly 25 years as a territory, the CBC reports, Nunavut is expected to sign a devolution agreement Thursday with the federal government, which is today. The prime minister is up there. This is scheduled to arrive in Iqaluit to sign the agreement alongside the territorial government representatives and Nunavut Tungavik Incorporated. The signing of the agreement essentially transfers responsibility of crown lands and waters from the federal government to the territorial government. This is a very, very big deal. The details of the agreement have not been released publicly yet, but will be available once the agreement is signed. Prime Ministers expand, uh, well, yeah, they're repeating the same sentence, so they missed a an editor could have been, done a better job on this. It literally says in the second paragraph, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is scheduled to arrive in Iqaluit Thursday to sign the agreement. The fourth paragraph, the Prime Minister is expected to land in Iqaluit Thursday afternoon and sign the agreement shortly after. Okay, so they had a bit of a... That's twice in two days now. They, 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 somebody didn't do their editing job or they did yes. it with... Because um, uh, yesterday when I was reading the inflation stuff, it said gas prices are down, so inflation is up. What? <laughs> mm, editors, come on. Well, I think yeah, yeah. a lot of times they're using AI to edit stuff now because, you know, if you can get somebody to do it that you don't pay. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, so the devolution has been a long process. It takes a long, long time to negotiate. In the 1960s, Canada began transferring decision-making controls to the territories for areas of government such as health care and airports, and that's sort of what the difference between a province and a and a, and a territory is in Canada, if you're, you're looking it up, is that a lot of the responsibilities of the provinces are still being taken care of by the federal government, either because there's not enough people or not enough resources or not enough capacity yet for them to take it on for themselves. So this is a very, very, very big deal. Mm. The more devolution there, hap there happens to be, basically, the closer a territory becomes becoming an actual province. Keep rolling. I really need another cup of coffee. I'll be right back. All right. Um, in 2019, the governments of Canada, Nunavut, as well as Nunavut Tungavit Incorporated, signed an agreement in principle, which set a deadline of three years to settle outstanding issues and five years to reach a final agreement. At that time, land and water management, including resource development, was one of the final areas of negotiation. Transferring responsibility for land and water would also make Nunavut responsible for crown land in the territory. That land is currently managed by the Government of Canada employees. At the time of the agreement, in principle, it was expected that those employees would be given the option to follow their job to the government of Nunavut or be transferred to another federal job. There are five phases to devolution, according to the Department of Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs. In 2008, the three parties agreed or signed a devolution negotiating protocol agreement, which outlined how the process would work. Then the second phase was Nunavut passed the next, uh, was, sorry. Excuse me, I'm tripping over my tongue here. Nunavut signed an agreement in principle outlining the main issues in 2019. The third phase was a final devolution transfer agreement was negotiated and is set to be signed by all parties. Then the groups will put together legislation and mechanisms to implement the agreement. That'll be the next phase. 
And finally, those are implemented through a series of legislative changes to be approved through Parliament and mirrored in the Nunavut Legislative Assembly. So there will be um, concurrent processes going on in the territory and uh, on Parliament Hill to pass this and then make it law. This is a very significant day in the history of our country. And we may not think about it because oh, it's Nunavut and you know, it's small and X number of people and whatever, but this is actually a very, very significant day. If you're a political geek, if you're a history geek, you know, 20, 30 years from now, people will look back on this day and will be celebrating this day. Cool. Or if not the day of the signature, the day that you know finally everything passes and actually becomes law. Mm -hmm. Kit Dan, if PP becomes PM, I guess I'm on my way to Nunavut. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So yeah, congratulations, congratulations, and uh, may you uh, keep providing peace, order, and good government. Because the land and the water, very, very, very important. Oh yes, and particularly in Nunavut. Particularly doing it, but especially with the warming and everything. So there's going to be a lot to manage as things change. A tremendous amount as, as time goes on. I was reading an article yesterday on, on how Greenland has lost a trillion tons of ice. Yes. Yes. According to the Journal of Nature in Greenland, uh, the ice in Greenland, according to AI, because they used AI to map mm -hmm. more than 200,000 glaciers over the, last, over the last 38 years, and it seems that the ice is melting 20% faster than originally thought. There's 5,000 square kilometers of the ice sheet that's gone, which is almost equivalent to the size of Prince Edward Island. 220, wrap your, your mind around this, 221 billion tons of ice are being lost every year. Yeah. That's not 221 billion tons over the last 38 years. That's, no, that's every year. year. Here's the warming of the planet. So when we're talking about rising sea levels? Well, hello. not just that. No. But here's the other big consideration. As, as the ice breaks off and, and floats into the Atlantic Ocean, as it slowly migrates south, as currents take it south, the, the Atlantic Ocean is now being flooded with fresh water, which desalinates the ocean to a certain degree and will change ocean currents and kill a lot of aquatic life. This is catastrophically bad for the life of the planet. Uh, and what they're very concerned about right now is how the Gulf Stream, which keeps Europe mild and temperate throughout the year, may disappear within the next five to 10 years, which would mean that all of Europe, which is not equipped for a Canadian winter or a Canadian summer, there are parts of Europe certainly that are equipped for Canadian summers, but the, the UK, almost nobody has air conditioning and almost nobody has central heat. It just doesn't get cold there. Uh, and a lot of the Victorian style homes, when they got the indoor plumbing, the pipes are on the outside of the house. Mm -hmm. They're not insulated. They're not designed for Canadian winters. Well, if in 10 years from now, London suddenly hits temperatures of minus 30 on a fairly regular basis, if they don't, Cassie's got it right here, London would be like Winnipeg. If they don't start insulating and providing, and we're talking trillions of dollars that's going to have to be spent to get Europe ready because it is coming. It's coming because greedy oil barons, amongst others, amongst others, uh, have not changed their ways. Our, our planet is dying and we're killing it. It's as simple as that. And, and Greenland, the amount of ice that it's losing will have irreversible catastrophic effects on the planet. This is a, a trillion graph. tons of ice since 1985. A trillion. Yeah. This is a graph uh, in uh, The Guardian. Um, the source is ubiqu ubiquitous acceleration in Greenland ice sheet calving from 1985 to 2022. Green AL, the Journal of Nature 2024. And you can see there was a pace here, but look at the curve. It is really bending right here, starting around to, to around 2000. It's just been accelerating and picking up speed. And there's, um, 
even if we like slam down the brakes and started doing everything right tomorrow, there are still decades of this process that's baked into the cake. Like, we're not, we're not listening. Mother Nature sat us down for a talk many years ago, and we did not listen. Adaptation and mitigation is going to be a huge, huge, huge part of let's, uh, let's quantify government's trillion, expenses. Let's quantify a trillion tons of ice. Remember, a million seconds is eight days. Mm -hmm. I think, is it eight days? Let me just check it out here. Um, one million seconds. Oh, a billion seconds is 32 years. One million seconds uh, is, I think it's eight days. Oh, no, 12 days, 11 and a half days. So one million seconds is 11 and a half days. One billion seconds is 32, uh, 32 years. One trillion seconds, do you want to know what that is? The difference between a billion and a trillion. So one million is 12 days. One billion is 32 years. One trillion seconds... 31,688 years hey. to give you an idea of how big of a number that is that's in seconds hey. so in 12 days a million seconds will have passed by in 32 years a billion seconds would have passed by I will never see a trillion seconds because I'm not living to be almost 32,000 years old so that okay. gives you an idea of how big a trillion is 1 million 1 billion 1 trillion Oh my word. That's a catastrophic event. Catastrophic. And and the number is staggering. And, and Apple computers is worth a trillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Their market cap is a trillion. And they're like, that's not even a real number. <laughs> As human right. beings go, it's not a number we can quantify in, in, in our brains. It's just, it's beyond imagination. Yeah. And yet. And yet. And yet. Um, a couple of little quick hits for you, uh, Kits and Cubs. Just some things that I noticed that I thought would be interesting to share. Uh, the first one is from an MP from BC named Talib Nur Mohammed from the Liberal Party. He's the MP for Vancouver Granville. And uh, Mr. Grizzly, if you'll put the image up. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have seen this on your, on your feed, but this is from January 11th. Um, he posted something that said that when things are hard, good people come together. I invited Muslim and Jewish faith leaders from Van Gran to meet PM Trudeau. They shared concerns and discussed the alarming rise in anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Their message was clear. They'll always stand together to fight hate. This made me happy. Again, when you're talking about mm -hmm. the year of the pushback, Mr. Grizzly. This is the year of the pushback. It really is. This made me happy because you got a whole bunch of people, the Spencer Fernandos and the Bra mm -hmm. and the Lori Goldsteins Frey. and Viva Frey, like this, keep on, on telling everybody's an anti-Semite or everybody's pro-genocide. Mm -hmm. One or the other. Canada's an inherently anti-Semitic country. We're surrendering to the anti-Semites. No, we're not. Right? No, we're not. This. We're pushing back this year, collectively, all of us, not just the two of us on your screen, all of us, everybody in the chat, everybody who, who is involved, like Laura Babcock, like uh, Crank, uh, Canuck, Cranky Canuck, Creek Pete, Dean Blundell, we're pushing back because we're tired of this. We're tired of this hate. We're tired of the lies. We're tired of the gaslighting. We're not taking it anymore. We are pushing back as... Canadian society, as members of the centrist uh, and, and progressive society of Canada, we're, we're done. We're not having this anymore. The liars need to be held responsible for the lies they tell. Mm -hmm. We're not taking it anymore. And this, uh, if you put it up, Mr. Grizzly, this was the tweet I was looking for the other day from uh, Spencer this Fernando. This one. That I said was absolutely horrible. Where he had Jagmeet Singh and Prime Minister shaking, shaking hands and led by Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh, Canadian authorities are surrendering to the anti-Semites. That's what Spencer Fernando, the leader, allegedly, of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, using his own personal feed to spread crap like this. Right? Yeah. That picture we saw, 
from that MP, Vancouver Grenfell, we need much more of that because that, that, kids and cubs, is the true spirit of Canada. Not what these rage baiters for clicks and likes and donations are putting out. No. No, we're what we saw at that table. Jewish people and Muslim people sitting together promoting peace and working together. Mm -hmm. That is the spirit of Canada. That is the spirit of Canada. Don't let anybody tell you different. No. That is the spirit of Canada, the dream of Canada, where we can all coexist, get along, do business with one another, hang out, go to barbecues together. Yep. That's what Canada is a dream, the dream that we can all live in peace and harmony. And and people go, you can't do that. Actually, you can. Yeah, sharing each other's. You just have to want to. Yeah, sharing in each other's celebrations. You just have to want to. Open your heart and open your mind. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there was a great tweet underneath it from a person, that uh, an account that goes by Orbis905. Meaningless. He meant libel, but it's written label here. I have learned these past three months that I am an anti-Semite because I have a problem with watching decomposing bodies of premature babies, church ladies being sniped at and agreeing with every single humanitarian organization asking for it to stop. So be it. If that's what makes an anti-Semite today, then, right? Mm -hmm. Words have meanings. Words have meanings. Not everybody's an anti-Semite. Just just not. (laughs) There's there's a lot of good people in this country, and we are the silent majority. Yeah. The silent majority is tired of hearing the lies. We're pushing back. So, yeah, please, spread the love, spread the joy, share this with everybody. We're not, we're not going to take it anymore. Yep. We are mad as hell, and we're not taking it anymore. Indeed. Then I saw this tweet, which is really interesting, because remember that uh, video we showed you of rebel in court under oath, we are not a news organization, news mm-hmm. championing David crisis actor Menzies? Well, this is the view from the other direction. Mm-hmm. When he was trying to accost mm-hmm. Minister Freeland. Now you see the post. The first lady walked Went to the right it. of the post. The police officer put himself beside the post on the inside. And David Menzies was walking fast, did not slap his momentum. He was trying to corner her. Mm-hmm. He was trying to direct her to that corner. Mm-hmm. That attention. kind of explains why the police got a little touchy quite quickly. Mm -hmm. because what happens what's going to happen next once the politician is cornered we don't know now i'm not saying that david menzies had any ill intent with regard to that that's not what i'm saying but when you're an officer you have like split seconds to make that decision Split seconds. And it matters. It really matters. Because um, in South Korea, a couple of days after Minister Freeland was accosted, this piece of news came out. And this adds some color and texture. South Korean opposition leader stabbed in the neck, airlifted to hospital. Lee Jae-myung was attacked while speaking to reporters during a visit to the southern eastern port city of Busan. Mm. Let's not play the video. He was in a scrum with Mm -hmm. journalists, and somebody emerged from the scrum and stabbed him in the neck. Yeah, There was no scrum at this particular juncture, but RCMP officers' security detail can't be too careful. They don't know. But, but this is, these are the things that happen. Well, and, and Menzies and is an on, agent provocateur, so... Yes, and, and they keep on calling it like a scrum. A scrum. Mm-hmm. So, so I was scrumming with the... But you weren't scrumming. No. Scrumming is a pool of journalists together, and the scrum part of it is them going, Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Prime Minister yelling against each, other, against each other to try and be noticed, and the Prime Minister or the leader that they're trying, they're scrumming, points to them and goes, you... You, you. There's a dynamic. There's a coming out 
of left or right, walking really fast and shoving, aggressively shoving a mic in someone's face while asking questions, insinuating that people are evil. By the way, when you're asking the questions, is not scrumming by any definition. Right, Kitlin M, a single person can't scrum. Exactly. Okay, we got to wrap up, sir. I just put two links in the chat. Um, oh, the second one didn't want to go there for some reason. Let's try that again. There we go. I uh, put two links in the chat. Oh, maybe I did. Oh, there they are. One is a link to uh, a story in the Ottawa Citizen about how um, hospitals in Ontario are now borrowing money from financial institutions to pay their bills because they've been allowed to run deficits because $2 billion has been cut from the healthcare budget by Doug Ford. The other is a, a, a paper that describes a million, trillion, billion, quadrillion, quintillion, sextillion, and notillion on how big those numbers are. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, I've got a, just a couple of quick pictures for you again. Uh, this one um, made me laugh because it was that feeling when mm -hmm. BC Hydro trolls the UCP. Okay, let me just BC Hydro put this. out a tweet on January 14th after the cold snap or during the cold snap that reads, Extremely cold temperatures across British Columbia led to new peak hourly electricity demand record Friday night. 11,300 megawatts. Despite record-breaking demand, we are able to meet the needs of our customers and help out our neighbors. That's downtown Even Calgary there. I think they're showing it. Oh, no, mm -hmm. that's, that's Vancouver. That's Granville from Granville yeah. Island. Yeah. yeah. And uh, not a lot of natural gas plants. No. In BC. And when Scott Moe, was crowing uh, about um, having helped. Well, turns out that um, Scott Moe kind of lied. Oh, Scott M Moe lied? No. No. He wouldn't do that. He's such an honest, upstanding citizen. He would never kill a woman while drunk. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Another little tweet. Uh, this is from Audric Moses at Audric Moses. What Premier Scott Moe conveniently forgot to mention when trumpeting about sending coal and gas-fired electricity to Alberta and taking shots at Trudeau was that his own fossil fuel heavy grid was bailed out by Manitoba Hydro. <laughs> Saskatchewan's electrical system was also taxed to capacity. The province imported 292 megawatts of electricity from Manitoba, 139 more than it exported to Alberta. Quote, so utilities across the continent, the world, they import and export power every single day, Sask Power spokesperson Scott McGregor told CTV News. It's a pretty ordinary thing, business as usual. I mean, right now, you are seeing a bit more visibility on it while the situation is ongoing in Alberta. Premier Scott Moe tweeted about power export to Alberta over the weekend, saying the power would be coming from natural gas and coal-fired plants. Moe took the opportunity to criticize the federal government's environmental policies. But really, it was power from... Manitoba, which um, passed through Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan took a bit of it for itself and then let the rest go by. And remember, folks, Manitoba's power, what is it? What did I say? 90? Is it 97? 96, 96 or 97. Or 97%. Might be 92. It's over 90% of their power is hydro. They're the largest producer of hydroelectricity in the country. You know what that is, right? Clean electricity and it's renewable. Again, more proof that they will say absolutely anything at any time and hope that nobody checks. Or notices. <laughs> These are not they the people. They lie. They just lie. They just, once you first, once you accept that the first thing that these people will do all the time is lie, then you start to get it. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Grizzly. Do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. We got to wrap. I got to right. leave like five minutes ago. <laughs> All right, kids and cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you like listening to us because we like making this tip for you. Remember, sharing is caring. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you won't want to miss, if you don't want to miss an episode, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. 
Just scan that QR code under my chin. That brings you to our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eagle beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words, and we'll come directly to you. If you also want to support us in other ways, go to our YouTube site and make like Kit Elaine, like, share, subscribe, smash all those buttons. And if you'd like to encourage us to, to do more, the squiggly by Mr. Grizzly's head brings you to our coffee page. That's coffee, K-O hyphen F-I dot com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. Please make a contribution to our emergency hydration fund. We appreciate it very, very, very much because democracy is something that you do. Get your shots, write those letters, and make a little contribution to the Red Cross if you can. Greatly appreciate it. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. Yeah, get out, get involved, and um, recruit as many people as you can to our our our, our goal, our drive, our fact-first program that, look, it's self-serving, yes, but it's serving the public. Let people know that we collectively, progressives, centrist Canadians, are not standing for this garbage anymore. We're done. Uh-huh. We're fed up. We're finished. Yep. 2024 is the pushback year. So push back, share this with as many people as you can, get people involved with civics, get people involved so that they know you're being lied to. And the politicians that are lying to you are allowed to get away with it because nobody ever holds them to task, but we will, because we will expose their lies just as we did with Scott Moe moments ago. Yep. And your Queen Beaver and Dean and other people are working on something. So hold on tight, kids. We might have some announcements for you soon. soon. Join us Saturday for our podcast. It's going to be a good one. Yes. And join us tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be pre recorded, but we have a very, very, very special uh, interview. Uh, it's heavy. It's heavy. Bring some Kleenex, lots of trigger warnings. Yes. Uh, we've pre written the description, we've put them all out there for you. So, um, but uh, a very important and necessary subject to talk about. And uh, next Friday, should we announce it? Yes, let's do that. We've scored a big interview. Next Friday, the 26th, do join us because live. Uh, we, we, we said we just had our biggest interview with a politician. Uh, I think we've got the next biggest mm-hmm. now. Uh, but Senator Patrick Brazo will be on our show. And his folks reached out to our folks. Yeah. Um, now, now you did uh, invite him on the show some time ago, but they reached out to us and said, yeah, we'd like to, we're amenable to coming on. So yeah, next Friday morning, we will have Senator Patrick, Patrick Brazo, who I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to chatting with because I've interacted with him on Twitter for a couple of years now. And, and uh, yep. he's, I mean, he's completely turned his life around and he'll be the first one to tell he, you that. And he's got a story. He's to got tell. a story to tell. He's a good man who has um, uh, mended his ways. I don't. I don't know what the right term is there. You know what I mean. I don't want to be. I don't want to be offensive to anybody. Uh, but he has changed his ways, and he's living his best life. And he is. Yeah. He's. He's a good man. He's a good man. Yep. So we're very excited about that. So do join us, kits and cubs. All right, Mr. Grizzly, roll those credits, please. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Yes, Kit Dan, to answer your question, he is the one who boxed JT. Quick Easter egg, just a visual, but I'm sure you'll like it. From the Ray Girl, happy Wednesday. Some hippie snow people. (laughs) Snowflakes of the world, unite!
<laughs> push it back. Right. Push it back. See ya.